Hello. Hi, I think we're live. Welcome. Hello, how are you all doing? Let me know if you're there, let me know if you're watching, let me know if you can see and hear me. That is one of the important things. You should be seeing and hearing some strange noises in the background. But hopefully they're all okay. So, welcome. Happy Friday. It's Friday today. Amazing. Okay. Yes, we can see and hear you. Hello, hello everyone. So, <laughs> what I have noticed. Oh, there's a horse. There are some things happening on screen. We are playing Assassin's Creed Origins today. Now, let's have a look, shall we? You might have noticed. Um, looking slightly different to where I was in the last stream. Well, our character anyway, not myself. Um, so we were playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey last time, which is set in ancient Greece. But today we're exploring ancient Egypt. So it's night time in a minute. And you might have noticed... We have a horse! I think the sun is coming up. There we go. Oh. Have a look around. So how are you doing? Welcome to our live stream. Uh, so my name is Leah and I am the learning officer for the National Video Game Museum. Uh, so on Fridays we've been playing some games, some actually good educational games is what we've called them. So games that are good, fun to play. I also teach you a little something too. So today we're going to be learning about ancient Egypt. <laughs> And we are going to be learning about that with uh, this lady. I think it's Cleopatra. So I'm going to explain to you how the game works, um, what is happening. So we're not actually playing Assassin's Creed today. We're playing the Discovery Tour. So um, if you did join us for the last one, you might recognise it. Um, we were playing the Discovery Tour for Assassin's Creed for Odyssey. That's the one. It's Origins and Odyssey, I keep getting them confused. Um, so it's not the main game, we're not playing the story mode, we're playing <laughs> the mode that takes us around to ancient Egypt. So that's what we are doing. So we're going to be exploring this city. At the moment we're on a sand dune <laughs> and we can... I'm not sure how well actually... Uh, Whoa! Do on sand dunes? Can of camels do well? Do horses do well? So we can explore the sand dunes, ha! but we can also see the pyramids over there. Whoa! Two. And we can do some tours. So we can do some tours around ancient Egypt that's going to teach us about what's going on and how they lived and worked and what happened to them. Ha! So let's do that. Say hello. Say he let me know how you're doing. Yeah. Are you having a good Friday? Do you have any fun plans? Ha! Let's have a look. So where are we going to go? We should probably go into the city. And maybe we'll whoa, explore the pyramids whoa. later on. And I know that down here there are some hippos. Yeah, yeah. By the water. So maybe we'll get off our horse and see if we can find those hippos. Whoa. Is that a hippo? What is that? What is that? Oh, the hyenas. Oh, you might want to turn the game volume down a teeny bit. Whoa. The mic up. Oh, actually, I'm quite far away from the mic. Maybe I should move that forward a little bit. I wonder if that makes it any better. How is that? Let's have a look around. And then we'll hop off our horse, and I think we'll go and explore. Look at this doorway. Whoa. So you might see some fun things you recognise if you know a little bit about ancient Egypt. Might, maybe you've been um, <coughs> studying. Oh, straight to the horse. Let's have a walk around. I'll tell you what, we'll have a look at our map. So I'm going to get our map up. So here's our timeline. So you can have a look about where we are on the time the timeline. I believe we're around here at the minute. Around um, Alexandria the Great, because we are in Alexandria or part of it. Still need the game volume down a tiny bit. Okay, let's do that. Let's go to 
Da, 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 da. How about that? Let's explore, shall we? So let's look at our map so you can see where we are. We are over here, look, on the coast. And I can zoom out and I can show you all of the places we can explore. So you have all of this down here. There's, a, there's all the deserts, the black desert, the great sand sea, the white desert, white desert oasis. Look at these. Um, and then all of these markers are places for you to explore and they're also tours so you can learn about the pyramids and you can learn about the sort of look that's the fauna so about uh, the flowers and the things that grow in ancient Egypt it tells you um, what kind of tour it will be and it tells you how long it's going to take as well so this one's only going to take three minutes so we could do that and you can fast travel to all these places. So you could walk over there, you take your time, you can explore and just walk around here or swim across the sea or the lake even, or you can just go straight there. So you can learn about Egyptian homes and things like that, okay? And then we have the tours. So if you want to look at daily life, oh, I pressed the wrong button, whoops, let's go back. So if you want to look at daily life, you can just click here and it'll tell you all the ones that you have to do and it'll tick them off when you've completed them as well so you, there's quite a lot there's lots of you to discover so this uh this discovery tour came out before assassin's creed odyssey so uh it's not it's not as detailed as some differences between the two games so they won't be exactly the same i'm just going to head back to youtube so i can see your comments um and then we have characters as well so we have all the characters so at the moment we're cleopatra okay queen of egypt um but there's lots of people for us to be as well so if we go, to go down here we can be some there's some children there as well there's an actor there's an egyptian lady should we be an egyptian lady maybe and we could um blend in let's have a look let's do that or the actor. The actor's fun. Uh, let's see. Or maybe you can be a modern day character. Because in Assassin's Creed games you're not necessarily playing as an ancient Egyptian all the time. Oh, let's play as Aya? Aya of Alexandria. I, I like her. Okay. Uh, we have a passport as well. So this is your passport. It tells you all the things that you've done and explored and learned. Um, your timeline and your controls okay so that is your menu so let's go back and now our character is different so i wonder if we should be able to have a walk around so it's a little bit dark right now but the sun is going to come up so here is the mummy so we can explore how mummies are made if you want to learn more about that but I think we're going to go on one of the tours. So let's do some fast traveling. Let's go to our map. Fast travel to a tour. Let's go to daily life. Oh, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm playing a lot of the switch, which means... Oh, the buttons are in a slightly different place. So I'm going to keep <laughs> pressing the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, I'm such a professional, aren't I? Right, let's have a look. Uh, we want oh domesticated animals maybe we'll learn about the animals should we do that so the pets and things that the ancient Egyptians had because I know they were a big fan of cats so maybe we'll see some cats on this tour how about that so let's fast travel over there and then we're gonna get a cool loading screen and with the loading screens the same as Odyssey you get some fun facts so in Cleopatra's time, history and mythology blends together. One could view Orpheus as a liar. So it tells you about things like that. That was quite quick loading screen, so that's alright. Yeah, here we are. So here is a start. <gasps> I can see some cats. I can see them. Oh, look at that. Okay. Domesticated animals of ancient Egypt. Learn about various domesticated animals of ancient Egypt. It's only time three minutes. Let's start this tour. Welcome we? to Domesticated Animals of Ancient Egypt. Amazing. 
Okay. So now it gives you this path to follow. <gasps> Look, there's a cat. Can I stroke the cat? I believe you can. Let me stroke the cat. Do I have to get closer? Oh, come on, let me stroke the cat. I'm so close. Oh, no, now I'm just stood on the cat. Okay. We'll just keep walking. Maybe we'll get another dance later on down the line. I know that Cleopatra will. She must have been a cat fan. Oh, look, there's a donkey. Agriculture and domesticated livestock were introduced 6,000 years ago. Archaeologists have found traces of cattle, donkeys, pigs, and dogs. Dromedary are thought to have been introduced during the Persian invasion. Oh, okay. So, and now it gives you a little bit of the tour. It tells you something as well. I can see some kites flying up in the sky as well. That's cool. Um, but it also tells you about uh, the objects that people learn these things from. So things that are from museums, and we can have a closer look at that so you get more in info. It tells you a little bit about um, the object. So this is a relief fragment with the king. Ooh, Khufu's castle, fourth dynasty. So this is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So they have this. We can hide the text and we can have a closer look. So this is one of the objects that you've learned these things from. So this game, uh, the discovery tour mode was made alongside uh, historians and Egyptologists, I believe they're called. Oh, this, um, this cow's gotten a little bit stuck there. So we can have a look at these guys and we can go back and follow the tour as well. So let's do that. Let's keep going. So you need to head to these little glowing lights. So you follow the road. Pets, Pets were yes. deeply cherished in ancient Egypt. Many illustrations Amazing. of children often include a pet in the depiction. Okay. So there's lots of pets, right? Cat figurine. Oh, let's have a closer look at that. Oh, that's cute. I like that. Is that like a toy? Many illustrations of children often included a pet in the depiction. So lots of kids have pets. This is in the British Museum at the minute. Okay, let's go back. That's very cute. Oh, there's some sheep here, some ram. There's some kids playing. Something. Let's go and have a look. Up here. It tells you how far away you are from things as well. So if you're worried about being very far away or taking too long, you know exactly. One of ancient yes. Egypt's most <laughs> iconic animals, the cat, wasn't adopted into their daily life until the Middle Kingdom. Hmm. Since they were so highly capable of killing snakes and rodents, Cats were present throughout every period. However, they only became pets sometime during the Middle Kingdom. Huh. Prince Thutmose, son of Amenhotep III, had his cat Tamu laid to rest in its own sarcophagi. Oh. Okay, that's cute. Right, let's have a look at this. What's this? Oh, they're receiving offerings from the children. Ah, so these are the people who uh, made that cat tomb. You can see there's a cat in the bottom left corner as well. I think that's a cat. Amazing. Okay, let's go back. And let's keep walking. Oh, there's some chickens over here too. Oh, I like this tour. Look at these cats. Oh, they're so cute. Okay. Right, I'm getting distracted. But I mean, you can't look at ancient Egypt. You can't explore ancient Egypt without cats. Right, let's Panamas! Oh. Yep. Let's keep going. Look at all these people. They are not. Okay, I think this is a very quick tour. The earliest station. reference to dogs dates back to 5000 BCE. They were popular pets wow. as they helped hunters and protected herds. That makes they sense. They were closely linked to Anubis, the jackal headed god. Okay. Baboons, monkeys, and even falcons were tamed as pets. Each was mummified and buried with as much ceremony as any family member. Oh, okay, so they're treated like family ah. members. Which, I mean, they are treated like family members today. So this is a mechanical dog. That's very cool. 18th Dynasty. Okay, so 
I think that's it. We've finished the tour. That was a very quick tour. Telling us a little bit about those animals. Hmm. How are the comments doing? Great way to learn some history. That is right. This is a very good way to learn a little bit of history. And you get to explore it yourself. So you don't have to stay on the tours. You can just kind of wander around. You might come across a tour that you could do. You could go through the map and explore them. Oh, there's another dog. Hello. He's, um... Oh, he's ignoring me. Okay, we will give up with that. Da, 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 da. Let's have a look down here. And explore. And you can also climb everything in this game. Much like the last one, you can climb everything. So, let's have a look. I believe the control says it's parkour mode, so you can just climb on top of everything. So, where should we go? Look at all those kites! Amazing. So, apparently people have been flying kites for some time. Let's have a look around. Is there anywhere we could go? Oh, look at that. We could climb up there and get a good view. We can have a look in this house, maybe? Oof. Can we go inside? Uh, maybe not. So you can go inside some of the houses, but you can't go inside all of them. Let's explore down here. And then maybe we'll do another tour. Or maybe we'll explore somewhere else. So let's have a look at our map. And then see where we are right now. Maybe we'll go to Alexandria because that is all the way up here. And it's kind of the start of the game, if that makes sense. We have the Library of Alexandria, so you might recognise some of this. We have the Greek pharaohs. Uh, let's have a look at Alexandria, shall we? I believe when you start the game, this is where you start. And it's quite a big city, so there's lots to see and there's lots um, to explore. What's a jump? Ooh, these jumps can be dangerous, so we can cycle through these things as well, look. Gold for glass. Ah. Alexander the Great's original sarcophagus was made of gold. Aha, here we go. So it's all loading in, look. Here we are, this is Alexandria, and the sun is coming up as well. Ooh, someone's yelling at me. Hmm. So this one will take five minutes. I don't think we'll do this one. I think maybe we'll go and explore. Maybe education. There's one about how the Egyptians uh. learned. So while you're doing some learning, you can learn about how they learn. Oh, look, someone, I think, selling some of these models that you might recognise. Mm. And they're selling rugs. So this is like a little market, I guess. It's quite a big vase. Is that for flowers? I don't uh. know. Oh, sorry. Bumped into a person. Whoops. Let's someone have a sit down. Let's uh, hop <coughs> over here. Is there anything tall for us to climb? Ooh, okay, that's quite tall for us to climb. Let's get a better view from this, shall we? <coughs> oh. Now, I'm hoping there's not too much lag, but there might be some delay in what you're seeing and what I'm playing. Just because it's such a big game. We had some problems with lag in the last one. Oh, is that the moon? Hello, moon. She's hanging off, look. So there are some boats. We can go swimming in this game as well. So you can hop into the water and just swim across. Oh, look at that. What's up there? Now, ancient Egypt is something I don't really know much about. <coughs> so let's do another tour, shall we? We started with the pet one, which maybe isn't the most important one to learn about, but... There are cats, so we'll do that. Let's go back. So we want to learn about daily life. And we can learn about... Hmm, there is one that says... Maybe it's at the top. Ooh. Mummies. Agriculture. Am I missing it? Fashions. We can learn about fashions. Ah, the Egyptian household. Let's do that, shall we? Oh, look, there's so many. There's different. Okay, so there's different stations. Right, so these are all the different stations, stations of things that you're going to learn about. OK. 
Okay, let's go to that one, shall we? Let's fast travel there. Four minutes, so another quick tour. Okay, oh yes, and you do have an eagle in this game. So you have an eagle that you can explore with. So we'll do that as well. We'll try and fly around. That's what we can do. I've got coffee as well. I'm trying to wake up this morning. Mm, okay, we're here. Ah, look, the sun's coming up now. I can see a little bit more. Where are we? Oh, look at this. Look at all this food. There's carrots there. Cabbages. Cucumbers. Okay. So we're in a different region now. Learn about the family life and homes of ancient Egyptians. Let's do that. Welcome to the Egyptian household. Oh, some fish over there too. Okay. Let's go. In pre-Greco-Roman culture, women were considered equal to men in many matters. Hmm. They owned property, testified in court, could divorce and inherit. Until the Greeks and Romans restricted their rights, Egyptian women could take over their deceased husband's trade. Marriage contracts included mentions of allowances and items of value brought to the marriage by the woman, which would forever belong to her. Huh. Well, that's progressive, isn't it? <laughs> that's nice to know. So let's have a look at this. So this is the statue of Nebwa and his wife, Ten Tenehet? Tenehet? I think so it's a statue amazing okay that's in the moment as well let's go back there they are having a chat so there's loads of food around what is that is that like i don't know what that is is it food what kind of food do they have are they grapes they've got some grapes maybe some mangoes there i don't know i'm guessing based on what it looks like let's have a look certain professions profession. were open only to women such as weaving or professional mourning, while others were available to both genders, including working as servants for the rich households. Social status okay. did have an impact, though. The higher in status, the easier it was to obtain education and access different professions. Okay. Look at that rug that they're making. I would definitely use that rug. Rug. Very nice. Okay, let's have a look at the weavers. So they are weaving. There they are. Weaving. Okay. Nefani weaving. So they are making the rugs. So I guess they're selling. So they have a profession. They're allowed to work. So that obviously changes over time, and some um, cultures are more pro progressive than others by our standards today. And some restricted those rights. Very interesting. Let's have a look. Homes were generally home, composed okay. of three rooms. First, there was the entrance, furnished with a small bench of brick, probably intended for a statue and protective divinity. Mm -hmm. Then there was the ceremonial room, meant to receive guests. The last room was either a bedroom or kitchen. Furniture consisted of basic chairs, chests, and storage. Tables were not used for family dinners. Instead, each individual had a small table of their own. Mm, so you don't have to share your table. That's exciting. Look at this little model of the house. I wonder why that was made. I wonder if that was for children. Okay, let's have a look. Can we go inside the house? I think we can. Oh, look at this nice desk. Okay. Oh, someone's yawning. Marriages were a social contract rather than a religious construct. Hmm. Family was vitally important to ancient Egyptians, and children were considered a blessing from the gods. The father, mother, and their children were the nucleus of the family, okay. and cohabitation yeah, sometimes similar. extended to mothers-in-law, sisters, aunts, and sisters-in-law. Extended family. What are they eating? Food, and you can see a marriage contract. Here's a marriage contract. It's a very old writing. Or hieroglyphs. Ooh, sorry, I need to sneeze. Right, let's keep going. 
Let's How many have we got left? Has anyone been keeping count? Oh, sorry, yeah. child. You're in my way. Right, let's go up here. Okay, so I like the household. House types. Status and wealth played a oh, large role in the house. style and size of ancient Egyptian homes. Oh, Commoners' houses were built with sun-baked mud bricks. Wealthier homes were often painted in white and decorated oh. with various motifs. It's very pretty, isn't it? Okay, can we go inside this one as well? Look at those, look at the flowers. They were the same flowers that the weaver was using. I wonder if they mean something, what type of flower they are. Town officials and the rich lived in mansions with numerous rooms that were luxuriously decorated. Only temples and tombs yeah, meant nice. to last for all eternity were built with stone. Huh. Well, we can have a look around. Oh, look at those. Okay, so this is a stone house. Meant to last a while. Ooh, can we go upstairs? Let's, okay, let's head off that tour for a bit. Have a look upstairs. Ooh, I wonder if that's like a bed. If there's fire is there, maybe we could do some reading. Ah, oh, here's a bed. Okay, it's a nice bed. Don't mind that. Is that pillows or is it flower? I wonder. Is it just a stack of pillows? Oh, look at that view. Okay, that's not a bad view. If you were living in that house and you had that view, I would not be complaining. Let's have a look around. Have that look at the side. Ooh, what's happening over here? We've got some food. There's a feast. Wow, okay. Very nice. Right, should we head back downstairs? We'll finish this tour. Uh, this way. Is it this way? Oh no, I'm going the wrong way. I don't have a great sense of direction. Sorry. Right, here we are. Follow this. Out here? What's this? Is this, is this like a shrine? Oh, it's a Funeral oh, okay. stone inscriptions focused on the main member of a household. A stone. Encircling this person Maybe would so. then be a spouse parents and children, possibly even siblings. Huh. These stones were so structured because there were no surnames in ancient Egyptian culture. Okay. Parents and children were a sort of family tree, which allowed for the identification of the deceased. Oh, so you can figure out who someone was based on the family tree. Okay, well that, that's sort of similar today. I guess there are offerings maybe down here as well. Okay, let's go back. Finished. Okay, we finished that tour. Now we can explore. Should we explore for a bit? Does anyone have any preferences? Oh, what's going on over here? I thought they had. Some, I thought that person was wearing that on their head, but they're not. Oh, I wonder if they're making wine. Are they squishing the. Squishing something. Here we go. Excuse me. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. There we go. Oh, I think when they have this kind of like shadow on the ground, you should be able to stand there. Have a go. Mm -hmm. I want to go. Oh, look, they're pouring more in. <laughs> they must be making wine. Okay, right. I'm getting distracted again. <coughs> Let's Sorry. have a little look. Ooh, look, I've got a torch. Let's see if I can get my horse. Let's put that away. So we don't want to the horse. And let's mount. Right, can we? Whoa! Oh, well, no, there's yeah. a lot of things in the way. Right. I wonder if we can see the pyramids. Would anybody be up for climbing a pyramid? Whoa! Shall we go and try and do that? Ooh. Oh, sorry, that was a hill. Oh, what am I? Oh no, I'm stood on something. Oh, sorry, horse. I'm taking you on a bit of a weird path. Whoa. Right. Hmm. Where are the pyramids? We need to get up high, really. I shouldn't be going down low. Oh, look at these flowers. Isn't that beautiful? Whoa. So has anybody learned much about ancient Egypt? 
Does anybody know any good facts? If you do, I would love to hear them. Or if you see anything that you'd like to explore. Ooh, I tell you what we can do. We can hop off a horse. Oh no. Don't follow the road, we'll dismount. Let's explore. What's happening here? Is that a crocodile? Is that man just... Is he scared of the crocodile? Look at that, it's a crocodile. Get in with the crocodile. Oh yeah, he's, I think he's running away. Yeah, I would run away from the crocodile as well. We have some heron here. What else do we have in the water? Oh. We have some flamingos. Oh, look, off they go. So you can see, you can learn about the wildlife that you would have seen in ancient Egypt. But we can also have a go on a boat. <coughs> Let's do that. So where should we go? We can go anywhere we like. Shout, if anybody sees, sees a pyramid or we'll climb it. We could have a look over there. Let's have a look in that city. Where? Are we? Let's go forward. If I can. Look at that bit, that huge boat there. So this is a little one. I wonder what kind of boat it was. It seems to have lots of food. It could be a trade. It could be taking things, moving things around. Let's have a look over here. There's a big house on the hill over there as well. We can maybe we could explore that, climb up that. And maybe we can fast travel to a pyramid. Let's climb it. You can have a look inside the pyramids as well. And it tells you a little bit about the people who explored the pyramids. All those um, historians. Oh, is that a hippo? Ah, yes. Hello, hippo. Look at that. Now, usually, I don't think you should get that list close to hippos. I think they can be very dangerous. That guy seems fine. We're okay. So one of the good things about the discovery mode is that um, there's no there's no fighting. There's no people to worry about. You're not going to get in trouble or get hurt. So you can just explore to your heart's content. If you do want to play that way, you, you can just play Assassin's Creed. And if not, you can just relax and explore with the discovery tour as well so let's hop off i think and do some swimming let's do that there's another big tower there maybe we'll climb that one if we can i think you can climb most of the things in this game nearly everything look at that nice swim oh and now we're dripping whoops We'll dry off. It's warm in Egypt, I think. It looks quite warm, doesn't it? Oh, look at this. Anthrope, enter the east. This is a little, I think, a little trading station. So there's shops, shops here. Oh, look, there's um. I can chat with this guy. This is the kite. Simante dune a pindison. Ah, I'm having a look at the rugs. Yes, I think I'd like a rug. Hey. I think I'm haggling now. Maybe they're too expensive. We'll come back later. We'll buy a rug later. How about that? Let's explore. Ah, look, there's more shops down here. There's some herbs drying. Some pillows. Ooh, Am I selling these things now? Do I work here? This person is. Selling some things. Borothen. Drying. I should say as well that um, we don't have the highest gra graphic settings on. I think they're on medium. So if you're playing this at home, maybe things will look a little bit better. But for streaming purposes, we have turned the graphics down a little bit because when we were playing. Um, oh, sorry. Whoa. Odyssey, there was so much lag. And it was getting a bit out of sync. Let's climb up here. Are they angry at me for climbing this? I don't think so. Let's have a look around. Do you see anything else that we'd like? Oh, right, okay. Right, we've seen the pyramids. They're over there. Maybe we'll try and climb those. How about that? 
Oh. Are they angry at me? I'm not sure. Are they telling me to get down? Hmm. Right, let's let's hop down. Oh. Cool. Oh, okay. Maybe we can get on a big boat. Oh, didn't need to stand on that. Okay, so they were behind us all along. I wonder if we can steal this big one. I mean, I don't mean steal, I mean borrow. Oh, sorry, this guy's fishing. I've just scared away all the fish. My apologies. Right, let's explore up here, shall we? Oh, no, I don't think we can. Ooh, take this big ship. Can we? Can we? No. Oh, no, we can sit down next to this fella and explore but oh this guy's got a boat <coughs> we can borrow boats from people as well so if you see someone on a boat hey slow down slow down slow down okay maybe we're not going to catch up to them but we can swim over there luckily enough she doesn't get tired so she'll just keep swimming so let's do that No, I don't think I'm going to catch them. Am I going to catch them? Maybe I'll get that boat over there. Or we can just swim. I think at this point I would already be exhausted if I was swimming. Ah! Caught them. Excuse me. <coughs> Hello. Can I borrow this boat? Can I borrow this boat? Oh no, I don't think I can. Damn it. Okay, let's try and get another one. This one? Excuse me, can I borrow your boat, please? Nope, maybe not. Oh, okay. How about we'll swim there and see if we can catch a boat along the way. And maybe I'll check in with the chat. Oh, hello! Hello, people joining us. Hi, how are you doing? We are playing Assassin's Creed. Um, I've forgotten which one it is again. Origins, not Odyssey. Oh, ow, ow. Oh, I think that was, that person was angry at me. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, no, ah. Oh. I'm trying to, trying to climb on. You don't need to, you didn't know these games happened at discovery mode. It is a great idea. Ah, yes, I can borrow this guy's boat. Sorry, I don't know where you're going, but we are trying to get over to the pyramids. Yeah, so discovery mode is just like a, a tour. So imagine the game without like the story or the gameplay, which sounds like it would be boring, but actually it's full of the history, full of objects from museums that you can have a look at, that tell you more about the actual history of the game and the location where it's set. So I know in these games there's a lot of uh, sort of historical characters. They're not necessarily doing real things, <laughs> shall we say? Oh, sorry. Um, they're not. Yeah, they're, they're not completely accurate, but they're based on real people or real parts of history. And this just lets you explore it, which is very fun. So yeah, it is. I think it's a great idea, and I'm very excited to see if they make one for uh, Valhalla as well, the next game that's going to be coming out, next Assassin's Creed game that they announced a couple of weeks ago, I think, or two weeks ago, is Valhalla. So we will be exploring Vikings, which I am very excited about. Right now, we are just... Oops, sorry. Oh, I'm not a good driver. I don't, I don't have a driving license, so I'm not, not going to be good, too good with a boat either. Right. Okay, so should we give this man um, back his boat and we'll swim to shore? Okay, we can see the hippos. So I think they've, they've based everything on kind of historical records, so all of the animals. Hi, hippo. 
Please don't get this close to the hippos in real life. But right now, we're going to try and find a pyramid. And we're going to explore one of them. So maybe we'll get our horse back. So if you press down on the D-pad, if you're playing with the controller, you can call your horse. Okay, I can see. I can, see, can you see the pyramid in the distance? I can see it. Whoa! Oh, sorry. Woo! Oh, yeah. This is a little bit of their farming. Like you can see that sort of irrigation. You know a little bit about that. Whoa. Not Whoa. a lot. Maybe we'll do another tour. But first, I want to get to that pyramid. And I believe you can climb them. Yeah, so let's yeah. try and do that. Oh no, it's one of those situations where they look further away than you think. But this game is really big. So all those things in the distance, most of them you can actually go and have a look at. Which is very cool. Let's do that. Ooh, oh, don't want to crash into those ruins. We're getting close, we're getting close. Has anyone been to ancient Egypt? Has anyone seen the pyramids? Because from this game, they look pretty huge. Let's have a look, shall we? We'll just keep. We'll just keep going, by the way. We'll just keep going. As long as our horse is okay. We're getting close. We're getting close. Oh, what's that? What are those? Are those camels? What? What are they? Are they hyenas? Wolves? Maybe they're wolves. Are they hyenas? Ooh, hello. Whoa. Look at them. Yeah. Ooh. Let's have a look at the comments. It actually makes it more interesting to me since I'm not Whoa. Uh, really into assassin assassination or whatever. <laughs> Same. See, I, um, I haven't played any Assassin's Creed, so I should probably maybe play some because I know they're very good games. But yeah, the, so I, I don't really want to play Whoa. the games themselves with that kind of story. I'm not necessarily interested in them. I know they're very good <laughs> games. People love them a lot. Um, but I love the discovery tools. <laughs> oh, look, we've Whoa. made it. Look at these. <gasps> wow. But I like games with lots of exploration. I've heard these games contain really good recreations of historical places. They do! Like, this is one of the places. Yeah. This is where, like, the game is set. Whoa. So if you play the game, you will learn a little bit about that history. You'll learn about some famous um, places. But this tells you all about just the history. It strips away that kind of, that story that Assassin's Creed has and that gameplay and just lets you explore the world that they've made. Which I think is really clever because they put so much time and effort into that recreation and they've worked with historians so it makes sense that they celebrate that I think right I'm just going to try and get to the top should we do that oh no so this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I think we have to climb up those ledges But yeah, oh, someone's been to e oh, Connor. Connor's been to I've been to Egypt, but not ancient <laughs> Egypt. Oh, I didn't mean ancient Egypt. <coughs> no, I didn't mean. Has anyone been to ancient Egypt? Maybe you're time travelers. Oh no, I'm slipping. <coughs> right, let's get out of that way. Did you did you see the pyramids? Did you climb them like this? <laughs> I feel like you're not going to be allowed to climb them. I think there's probably rules against climbing on them. And they're probably great to climb. Oh, actually, maybe not. Maybe they're quite slippery, aren't they? How are we doing? We're getting, we're getting close to the top. Okay, I just hope I don't slip down now. Oh, no! Oh, that was close. Uh, can we... Okay. I hope this view is worth it. What do you think? And then I promise we'll get we'll, we'll head on to another tour. Oh no no no! Oh oh no no! I did it again. Right, we're close. Oh, you can see our eagle. We have an eagle friend in this game, by the way. And we can explore using the eagle. Da 
da da. Okay. Nearly at the top. Nearly at the top. <coughs> oh no, do we have to we're gonna shimmy across, I think. Shimmy across. <coughs> yes. And then up this way. Aha. <gasps> oh yes, look, we're, we're so nearly there. Okay, we've made it guys. We have made it. So yeah, if you um, are interested in these games, you can buy just the games. You can get like just the discovery mode. Look at this, we made it to the top. Aha, okay, now this is a view, isn't it? Look at this, look at all that. There's our eagle flying around. Look, there's the other pyramid. And look at this gold at the top as well. I guess this is gold plated some inscri inscriptions in it as well look at that uh, amazing and I guess now that we've made it to the top we can slide down do you think which direction can we go if we can slide down in this direction should we slide down Ooh. Ooh, I'm just thinking about how painful this would be for your feet <laughs> Okay, this is definitely not allowed. Ah, okay, we, we stopped. Let's hop down. Whoa. Let's get down. Come on, get down. Let's keep sliding. Down we go. Okay, we made it. Woo! Big jump. Can we look inside? Oh no, this area is closed off. Now, if we have a look at our map, you'll be able to see there are some tours in here. So we can explore inside the pyramids too. Or we can just hop up to this one, look. Ta -da. So, I'll tell you what, we'll go on another tour. Let's have a look at the tours that we can do. So we have Egypt, Egypt. we have the River Nile, deserts, deserts. Deserts, <laughs> not desserts. There could just be a, a, a tour. Rediscovering Egypt. The fauna, the flora. Hieroglyphs. Should we learn about hieroglyphs? Okay, yes. So, is this set in a time when the pyramids were kind of new? Yes! Okay, so in this menu, you can have a look at the timeline. So we are in this era, I believe. So this is today. Here's the year 2000. Here's Cleopatra up here. And we have Alexandria the Great. So we can explore Alexandria, that kind of area that he founded. So I believe we're around here. And then you have Ramses, Tutankhamun, and you've got the Great Pyramids here as well. So there are there were lots of pyramids made different sizes different places some of the ones that are left i think some of the ones we think of the great pyramids so that's when they were made so it kind of tells you where and when things are happening but it's kind of hard to wrap your head around because you think about ancient egypt and you think about everything happening at the same time but actually it was over like thousands of years all these all of this and then we have all the way up here we have cleopatra it wasn't I mean, too long ago in the grand scheme of things, if you think about the old kingdom and the Great Pyramids. So yeah, let's go back to our tour, shall we? What, what were we going to do? We were going to explore the hieroglyphs. Should we do that? There's thermal baths? Okay, I think we should look at the hieroglyphs, because I am interested in those. It's only seven minutes. There's 14 stations, but seven minutes. Alexandria was filled with temples, theatres, museums, and libraries. There we go. Oh wow, look at this. Look at those statues. Are they rams? Okay, let's look at the hieroglyphs, shall we? Learn about hieroglyphs, how they evolved through time, and what they can teach us about, teach us about ancient Egyptian culture. Yes, please. Welcome to Ancient Egyptian Hieroglyphs. Thanks. 
Oh, look at these guys. Okay. Hieroglyphics were used as sacred writing, appearing on monuments, statues, and sacred papyrus texts. The earliest symbols that resemble hieroglyphs were on pottery dating back to 4000 BCE. This stylized form of signs and drawings was the only writing used from its ancient origins to the end of pharaonic history. Ancient Egyptians referred to hieroglyphs as the writing of the gods. The writing of the gods. There we go. Ah, oh, that's a good question. So the pyramids were already 2,000 years old by that point, but they still had the gold, gold tops. Yes, some of them. Some of them were newer than others. So some of them were made 2,000 years ago. Some of them were made sort of, um, much later as well. So they Considered might be a difficult later. language, it was intended for pharaohs, nobility, and priests, and meant to be used in ceremonies, within tombs, and for government records. Okay, so Since few Egyptians were able to read the ancient hieroglyphs, the mythological aura around the language was persistent, even in their own culture. Hmm. Okay, so they really were understood as the writing of the gods. Look at that. Oh look, this is a statue. So this is the fifth dynasty. And this is a scribe, so this is someone who is writing. Look at all of those. So there are gold, actually, it lasts a long time. The structure of hieroglyphs offers insight into Egyptian like culture, not just in what the translations say, but in the structure of the symbols themselves. Huh. They were found on tomb walls, on sarcophagi, on statues, mm -hmm. and on pottery, and were meticulously recorded in countless ancient papyri. Hmm. Okay, so the reason we know some of this is that this has lasted, so we still have these scenes that this is a scene from about agriculture so this is people farming and it's been painted and inscribed on the side of a tomb could have been something to do with what they did what their job was gold actually gold lasts a long time so those gold tops probably aren't still there today fortunately lots of things from ancient egypt were looted they were taken by tourists um stolen some of it's starting to be returned which is good that gold in many temples taken. priests would perform rituals and daily offerings these were accompanied by hieroglyphs used as spells in tomb paintings the hieroglyphs are represented with formulas to recite these spoken words were meant to be spells which would allow the deceased to benefit from the offerings for all eternity okay, here we go. spells and offerings were also written for the living to enhance medicines and cure illnesses. Okay, so you get spells and offerings written. So why is that what these are? Let's have a look. What's next? Oh, the Book of the Dead. The most famous of ancient Egyptian documents is the Book of the Dead. Written in hieroglyphs and hieratic texts, it depicts important spells and rituals. These spells were intended to ensure a smooth transition from life to death and allow the deceased to safely navigate the perils of the afterlife. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, you might have heard of the Book of the Dead if you've been learning about Egypt. You might have been learning about mummies, mummification as well, and the pyramids. The pyramids were where the pharaohs... Uh, Even pharaohs after it was deciphered, buried. the reading of hieroglyphs remained difficult at times due to the many directions in which they can be read. Depending on the orientation of the signs, hieroglyphs can be read left to right, huh. right to left, horizontally or vertically, though never bottom to top. Okay, so you can go down or you can go left to right, but you can't go up, down. Okay, From... mm, that's interesting, I didn't know that. Let's have a look. Oh wow, look at this. Amazing. A clue on which way to read is to first notice which direction the figurative signs are facing. Oh. If a pictogram is looking to the right, then the reader is meant to start from the right and read towards the figure. Oh. Column text on a papyrus begins from the right, then goes top to bottom for each column. Okay. See, I would have thought it would be starting away from where the figure was going, but actually it's going towards the figure. Or which, 
okay. That's confusing. No wonder not a lot of people do Text written on this. tomb walls resembles the structure of a page from a comic book. Huh. The text can be placed in front, behind, or above the character, and its symbols look in the same direction as the character. Another wow. clue is that the name of a god or hieroglyphs meaning gods or kings Amazing. are always written before the descriptive text. Okay, that's cool. Spirit, how did they find all this out? Some Compared to alphabetical languages, like Egyptian that. hieroglyphs have more symbols. Confronted with the absence of vowels, oh, the Egyptians invented a category of signs. When placed at the end of words, these huh. signs help inform its meaning. For instance, a drawing of a lion will refer to a lion and also relate to the abstract concept of a lion as something dangerous or powerful. Okay. That makes sense. Someone has, like, thousands of years later, they've worked all of this out. Or through time. Middle Egyptian hieroglyphs contained a little more this. than 700 signs. Wow. By the end of the Greco-Roman period, there were 10,000 signs. Wow. Egyptologist Sir Alan Gardner created a list classifying common hieroglyphic signs and their variants. Wow, that's quite a lot. It must be strange to live in a civilization where most of the people there can't read or write. That's, that is right. That's very true. Everyone today can read and write most of the time. See, we consider it very important. This was supposed to speak for the gods. Ancient Egyptian slightly. languages have many similarities with Asian and African languages. Huh. They have evolved in similar ways to the various forms of written Egyptian. Okay. These languages belong to the Hamito-Semitic group. There were five clear evolutions in the Egyptian language, each with their own distinctive structure. These languages oh. are known as Old Egyptian, Middle Egyptian, Late Egyptian, wow. Demotic, and Coptic. Coptic is the only living language that allows linguists to define the vowel structure and to distinguish different dialects. Okay, so it's probably how they figured those things out is that they have languages today that are similar or that have come from ancient While Egypt. hieroglyphs and hieratic script give us an idea as oh. to how the ancient Egyptian language was structured and written, the way it was spoken is still up for debate. The team opted for English as the spoken language, with the characters using ancient Egyptian and Greek words the and accents. The language that is spoken in the background by the crowds is largely based on Sir Alan Gardner's Egyptian grammar. Hmm. To help resurrect a dead language, we consulted Egyptologists and dialogue coaches to establish our target sound, and cast actors with Arabic, Hebraic, and African backgrounds to bring the game to life. Huh. So this is interesting, we talk about how they recreate those things in the game, because the game is set in ancient Egypt, so they've taken a lot of that history and put it into the game, including the recreation. I wonder if you let hieroglyphs this whole room would be readable. Yeah, I guess it would. You'd be able to understand everything that's <laughs> All of these as well, like, this is the writing, I guess you might read it top. Top to bottom, not allowed to read it bottom to top, so it'd be that way down. Yeah, you'd understand what's written on these walls. Let's have a look, what's happening in here? Passage After history. Alexander the Great's arrival in Egypt and the establishment of his reign, hmm. Greek became the language used by the governing bodies. Okay. The inability to read hieroglyphs caused resentment among the Greek population. It's from this tension that the Rosetta Stone was created. Ah, you might have heard of this. So the Rosetta Stone, it was like, it's a stone with lots of different languages on it. They're all saying the same thing. So it meant that people could, if they knew one, they might be able to translate the other. So you might have heard of the Rosetta Stone. I'm hoping that I explain The spread that of Christianity yeah. ended pharaonic culture and resulted in the destruction of its pagan monuments. Yeah. This also marked the end of hieroglyphic writing mm -hmm. and understanding. So the spread of Christianity meant that they, lots of this was destroyed and torn down and people lost the understanding that they had. Okay, here we go. Tour complete. Oh, what's down here? Look. The 
let's explore, shall we? Oh wow! What are they? What are they? Are they building something in here? Are they protecting it? Is this a temple? Oh, we've got more of those hieroglyphs. guys I'm assuming this is a temple look at this like inscription on the side it must be hard for actors to perform their parts in the resurrected dead language and make their performance seem natural that's true that is very true it must be difficult to, to understand and perform in something that hasn't existed for thousands of years and that we don't really understand but it's interesting that Ubisoft, the people who made Assassin's Creed, they used actors um, with backgrounds that had sort of come from ancient Egypt and those languages that had come from ancient Egyptian languages. They maybe have a similar sound, if they're not, you know, perfect. Oh, well, that was cool. What time is it? Oh, it's 12 o'clock. We've been streaming for an hour. Shall we do one more tour? How about that? Because that was really interesting. Yeah, I do I do really recommend these games. Oh, I'm out of breath. I'm running for too long, much. Let's have a look. Where are we? Ah, okay. Here we are. So when he talks about Alexandra the Great as well, Alexandra, this is where he sort of landed. And this became Alexandria, I believe. Oh, should we have a look about... Education, yes, two minutes. Okay, we'll have a look at that one. Learn about how young Alexandrians were educated. I love their attention to detail in all of this. Yes, I do too. It's honestly amazing. So if you look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the discovery mode in that, that's a similar thing. But I think it's actually it's more in depth than this one. So this one came out first and then um, Odyssey came out and that explores ancient Greece. So that one I think is even more in depth. It's an even bigger game. So when we were trying to stream stream it two weeks ago, we had a lot of problems with it um, loading. So there's long loading times because it's so massive. Aha, here we are. So we are in Alexandria again. Let's have a look at education. And this is what's amazing about this. It's like, this isn't the main game. They didn't really have to do this. But they spent so long recreating this world and learning about that history so it could inform the game that they created this like tour of ancient Egypt. Right, let's start this Welcome tour, shall we? Welcome to Education in Alexandria. Thank you. Let's look. Ah, the education knowledge. of young Alexandrians did not differ from the one generally dispensed elsewhere in ancient Greece. Hmm. At the okay. age of seven, the child was taken in charge by a tutor, who then became responsible for instilling an elementary education, as well as good moral principles. Mm. Okay, so they had a tutor. Oh, let's have a look at this. What's this? A bowl. Ah, okay, so this is a bowl depicting, I guess, uh, education. So someone's being taught things. Deacon. Oh, Deacon, hello! How are you doing? We're exploring ancient Egypt. We're learning about education. Oh, look, those, those guys aren't learning anything. They're fighting. Stop it. What are you doing? Hey. I think they're okay. I think they're just play fighting. We have a, we'll, keep, we'll keep going. <laughs> Teaching was generally done outside, in the open air. In the gymnasium, students were taught not only sports, but also topics such as rhetoric, philosophy, music, like and poetry. <laughs> all things deemed essential to one's education at the time. Oh, okay. So this is an archaeological site. This is based on uh, some of the ruins in site of Olympia in Greece, a gymnasium. There you go. Look at that. Cool, it is cool. <sighs> What are they learning? Look, they're all sat here. It's like a little hat. Here, both girls and boys are shown attending a class given by one of the oh. rhetoricians of the era. The team made the choice to show both genders attending class within the context of the game world. 
Even though it is historically inaccurate, the team felt it was not necessary to prioritize historical sexism over inclusive gameplay. Oh, there you go. So it, it, it's also telling you about the game itself. So they show boys and girls learning, even if that's not completely accurate for ancient Egypt, but that is the choice. Yeah, I think only boys were allowed in education back then. Probably, yes. I mean, there's, there's some girls, but probably not most of them. But Ubisoft, people made a game, made a choice that they just wanted to show inclusive gameplay. So I'm sure we all kind of understand that maybe girls and boys were not completely equal. But for the games we make today, we want to show that, present that. So that's interesting. That's an interesting historical difference that it tells you about. Not every single game will be completely stopped. You know, but they'll tell you about it. Okay, so that's our tour done. So, let's have a look around, shall we? Oh, look at the camel! Oh, can we get on the camel? Can we? Oh, no, we can't get on the camel. Oh, we can borrow the horses. Oh, look, there's a tour here as well. So you might, as you're playing, come across a tour. Oh, should we learn about the islands of the pharaohs? Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, we've got seven minutes. We'll keep going. We're having a fun time. I think we're supposed to really stream for an hour, but I'm, I'm happy to. Welcome have a good time. to the islands <laughs> of Pharaohs. We'll the islands of the pharaohs. Yes, let's learn about this. The Heptastadion was a bridge-like causeway connecting wow. the island of Pharaohs to mainland Alexandria. Okay. Its name is based on the Greek terms of measurement, hepta, meaning seven, and stadion, which is a measure of length of roughly 180 meters. Interesting, okay. So that is the map. And then we've got this, um, got this map, look. So this was drawn in 1995, so this is not too historical, but look, look. Okay, let's have a look. Let's explore over here, shall we? I'm a since its construction would separate the Grand Port to the east and the Port of Eunostos to the west, it was designed with channels at each end. These openings allowed passage from one port to the other. Oh, okay, so they, the, I guess the boats could go back and forth. Cool. Let's keep going. Let's follow this bridge. It's a very long bridge. Along huh. with creating separate harbors for the commercial and military shipping, the causeway Ooh, served as a main aqueduct for the island's inhabitants. Ah. Its presence also helped protect the island and its ports from rough wind and sea currents. At the end of antiquity, the Heptastadion disappeared under layers of silt and soil, oh, no. which formed an important sedimentary deposit. Okay, so what? Disappeared. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, not gonna bump into you. I always feel a bit bad when I knock people out of the way. Ah, so we are on the island of Pharaoh. Pharaohs, I think. I was having such a problem trying to pronounce all the Greek words when we were exploring ancient Greece. <laughs> I'm gonna have the same thing with the Egyptian words. Where are we going? Okay, up here, up this hill. <coughs> up this hill, let's have a look. Ah, oh, wow. While the this. Serapion was the most celebrated of the temples in Alexandria, many other temples were built within the city. Okay. Most of these structures have been completely erased over time, and there is no way to discern how many okay. existed. However, research of ancient papyri offered tantalizing hints as to the possible location of at least some of the temples. Ah, so this is a drawing from the 1800s, the 19th century, of maybe what was left over. So not everything that we're seeing in this game would have been left behind, but it's been recreated. Cool, okay, let's go keep going, shall we? Let's explore over here. We're going inside this. Oh, I guess we go inside and we go back outside. Look at this. Both papyri and coins reveal evidence of many temples built for the gods. 
Poseidon, the god of the sea, likely had an edifice in his honor west of this island, as well as on the mainland. Oh, cool. This temple next that to you is dedicated to Iset Feria, the divine protector of the lighthouse. This cool. location hosted annual nice. celebrations in the month of April, known as the Sacrum Feria, in connection to the lighthouse. That's cool. In her incarnation as Iset Fortuna, the goddess carries a rudder and a cornucopia, both symbols of good luck for navigators. Oh, okay. So this is in the Vatican Museum in Rome. I guess a statue of Fortuna and there is the statue. So it's based on that statue that you just saw. Amazing. Right, let's have a look around here, shall we? Considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Lighthouse of Alexandria was a source of great pride for the inhabitants of the city. Construction began under Ptolemy I's reign and lasted 15 years. It was completed during his son's rule. Once completed, the lighthouse was dedicated to the gods for the salvation of those who sail the sea. Ah, so this is another version of that same statue, I guess. Isis Ferreira? Divine protector of sailors. Okay. Should we keep going? Let's keep going. Then maybe we'll finish up after this. Maybe I'll fast travel to a pyramid and end it there. For those of you Built on the island of Ferris, the stone structure was three tiers wow. set on top of one another in a step formation. The second floor consisted of an octagonal tower and the top floor was a cylindrical tower topped by a statue. Oh, yeah, you can see the, the statue interior the provided space for staff rooms and a ramp which allowed the transport of fuel to the upper floors. Staff rooms even. Cool. Let's have a look around Essential to safe navigation through the rifts and shallow waters, the Ferris was a functioning lighthouse with a beam reportedly visible 50 kilometers away. It's unclear what kind of fuel wow. was used or how much. Yeah, Any other details of how the light worked remain a mystery. Huh. That's cool. So they don't know. For several centuries, the Ferris was one of the highest monuments ever built by man. Oh, wow, it that. measured roughly 110 meters in height, compared to the Pyramid of Giza, which was around 140 meters huh. tall. Gradually, the structure was eroded by earthquakes and oh, then whoa. completely destroyed in 1480 CE when a fort was built over it. Damn. Okay, so Archaeological oh. excavations on the seabed have uncovered many blocks from the ancient building. Oh, cool. So they found some of the ancient building. And then look at this. This, like, coin, this currency has got the lighthouse on it. It's even got the little statue at the top. That is amazing. I've heard of the Pyramid of Giza, but I've never heard of the, this lighthouse. Okay, Islands of the Pharaohs, finished. Amazing, and then look at this view. Very nice, there's even a little boat here. You can steal that boat if you wanted to. Okay, I think we're gonna leave it there. And just to end it, I think we might. Take a look at this map. Oh, can we get, <gasps> oh, instead of, should we have a look at the top, the lighthouse? the top of the lighthouse all ships entering Alexandria was searched for books which were often copied and became part of the library oh that's cool so every ship that came into Alexandria they were like give us your books we need your books for the library that's cool <gasps> look are we on top of it yes we're on top of it look we are on top of that lighthouse look at that view can we see any of the pyramids yes there are the pyramids see them over there oh look at this they show us that amazing view wow look at that oh i'm very sad it's not there anymore it's amazing i wonder if we can get right to the top should we get right to the top yeah why not why not i'm hoping we can get right to the top 
Oh look, this is what they're burning. Something, this is their lighthouse. Oh. Ah, here's the statue. Is that Poseidon? Ah, look, he's got a three-headed dog. Can we... <laughs> okay. Oh, oh no, I jumped off. Yes. <laughs> we could stand on his head, but I fell off. Okay, we'll try that again. Oh, I was too excited about jumping on Poseidon's head. It's probably incredibly rude of me, but I mean, needs must. Ha! Okay, there we go. Okay, we can see those pyramids in the distance. Our little eagle is uh, flying around as well. You can see some ships out here in the distance. Yeah, so that is Assassin's Creed origins the discovery tour so i hope you have uh enjoyed exploring ancient egypt yeah, the lighthouse is amazing the lighthouse is amazing i love that lighthouse i hope you've enjoyed um having a little look around i certainly have i really really enjoy the discovery tour modes of the assassin's creed games and then hopefully we'll be able to see maybe the vikings when that hella comes out maybe we'll do another live stream could be a while. I'm not sure when that game is supposed to be released. It's just been announced. But, oh, I'd be very excited to try that out. So, yeah, there we go. Amazing. Isn't that fun? Okay. So, I'll leave it there. I hope you have. Standing on the shoulders of giants. Literally. Look at this guy. Oh, this whole lighthouse. Incredible. Or Poseidon's head. <laughs> Sorry, Poseidon. I have to apologise to Poseidon later on. But yeah. Isn't that amazing? I highly recommend this game. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look around um, ancient Egypt on this uh, Friday afternoon now. It's Friday afternoon. So we were a little bit... Uh, we went a little bit over today's stream, but I was having a good time. So hopefully you were too. <laughs> Um, thank you for today's stream. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I hope you had a good time. Um, if you do want to have a look at uh, ancient Greece, we, ha we have another, another live stream. There's a couple of problems about with the loading and the loading streams, but now it's uploaded to YouTube. You can just skip through them. You can get to the good stuff. We were climbing on some other gods' heads. That's a common theme when I'm exploring these places, apparently. Just climbing on gods' heads. Oops. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, I should say next week, I think we're having a little bit of a break and then we're preparing the rest of the stream. So we're going to be back doing some more gameplay, teaching you about some streams as well. So bear that in mind, we're going to have a little bit of a break and then we're going to come back with even more streams. So I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Enjoy your Friday and enjoy your weekend. It's the weekend. So I hope you have a nice relaxing time and stay safe and we will see you a little bit later. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye guys. I'm going to end the stream. Bye. 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 Bye.